Solar panel prices are down 50%. Over 100 solar company bankruptcies in the last year alone. What's going on in the solar market and where are things headed as we get further into 2024? I'm gonna be answering those questions and giving you an update on what's going on in the solar market in today's video. All right, so in today's video, we're gonna be talking about what has caused the price of solar panels to plummet 50% from where they were last year. Now, I just got back from the Solar and Storage Live conference in Philadelphia, and I had a chance to meet with the CEO of one of the largest solar panel distributors on the East Coast. And what he told me is that solar panel prices, wholesale prices that the installers pay when they buy materials, are down 50% from where they were last year. Now, I know many of you out there might be watching this thinking that you're gonna be able to get a much cheaper deal on your home solar panel installation. I'm gonna explain later in this video why that's not the case. But for the time being, wholesale prices that installers pay for solar panels, depending on which brand of solar panels they choose, is down as much as 50% compared to the previous year. Now, part of what's leading to this is the fact that China continues to dump out high volume of solar panel supply at the same time as we're seeing slowdowns in certain sectors of the US residential market, particularly in California, where the net metering rules just changed. According to the Wood Mackenzie report, China owns 80% of the world's solar panel production capacity. Now that's more than double what they need for their own domestic consumption. And so of course, China is a net exporter of solar panels. And despite tariffs and various other policies trying to disincentivize use of foreign made or Chinese made solar panels, they're still finding their way onto the US market. Uh, the word on the street is that they're using intermediary countries that are tariff exempt uh, or where the tariffs are less severe so that they can get that product to market ultimately here in the US. And so that, that means there's just a lot more solar panels in inventory available for sale. And so the price has adjusted down accordingly. Now in the last year, we've also had over 100 solar company bankruptcies. The solar industry as a whole has experienced a slowdown, particularly in the US residential sector. In fact, if you haven't seen our previous video, go back and watch our previous video on solar market crash 2024, where I explain the various factors contributing to the slowdown and what I believe installers need to do to stay competitive going forward. So of course we have tidal financial conditions than we did last year. Uh, specifically, I'm talking about higher interest rates and dealer fees. Now, the reason that this is important is because most solar that's being installed for US homes is using some sort of financing. Most customers are not cash customers, so most customers are gonna be using some sort of a solar loan uh, or a solar lease. And so when interest rates rise and dealer fees rise, that means that the monthly payment that you have to pay for your solar power system is gonna be higher than it would be otherwise. Now this is important because most of the way solar is sold is on a bill swap or a, a bill reduction. In other words, the idea is you can purchase a solar power system with no money down and the monthly payment for your solar loan payment should be the same or less than what your current electric bill is. But with higher interest rates, that's not always the case. So if your monthly payment for solar now might be equal or might be higher than what your old electric bill is, there's just not that same incentive to want to go solar. By the way, if you went solar recently and the company that installed your solar panels went bankrupt, leave a comment down below. We'd like to hear from you because I'm hearing that there's a number of abandoned systems out there. In other words, systems that were installed, but the company that did the original installation went out of business and now homeowners might be looking for alternatives to provide service to keep that system healthy. The other issue that solar installers are facing now is that the time that they take to get paid from the finance companies is longer than it had been in the past. Now in the past, typically a solar finance company would advance up to 50% of the project cost to the contractor. So that can help the contractor cash flow their operations or purchase materials ahead of time. But now what we're seeing increasingly is the finance companies are withholding all of the payment until the solar project is totally complete meaning that the, the project has reached PTO or permission to operate from the utility so it can be energized and start selling power back. Well, that means it could be four, five, or six months from the point of the original sale 
until the contractor is fully funded on the project. And so of course the contractor is going to have to figure out how to cash flow its operations during that four to six month period of execution, which could put more pressure on a solar company. Now I'm also hearing reports that the finance companies are bypassing the contractors altogether. And what I'm talking about here is where a finance company may partner directly with a solar sales organization. Technically, it's, it's, it's a separate business entity from the contractor that's doing the physical construction work. That way, the solar loan company has a, a loyal sales force that's writing new paper, that's initiating new loans. But in many cases, the loan company could be withholding payments or, or withholding the timeliness of payments from the contractor. So again, all these things contribute to solar business failures. Now, with the price of solar panels falling 50% from where they were last year, you may think that retail price to the customer for a fully installed solar system should be less significantly less than where it was and i'm going to explain a few reasons why that's not entirely the case now we've already talked about the fact that there have been a number of solar company bankruptcies and and i think a lot of folks don't really understand the amount of risk that the contractors are taking on in the solar installation process you know for contractors it's, it's way more difficult for them to scale up or scale down with demand um, unless you're just totally ruthless and have, have no problem with firing half your staff if, if sales you know, forecast or if sales slow down. Um, but typically a contractor is gonna have to gradually ramp down or ramp up when it comes to, to operational capacity. So I'm talking about hiring installers, training installers, getting new vehicles, uh, acquiring new tools and equipment. All of these things take a significant investment and proper planning. And so if, for example, you're a California installer and your sales are down 50%, you know, from one month to the next, it's very difficult for you to cut your staff, cut your expenses, cut everything proportionally at the drop of a hat. It takes a little bit of time. So this is part of why I think contractors need to protect more of their margins now, even though the raw solar panel cost is lower than it was last year. The other issue, of course, is a lot of solar contractors now are taking on more complex installations, including not just solar panels, but also battery storage as well. Now, as one of the first guys installing solar with battery storage here on the East Coast, I know firsthand how difficult it is in terms of planning, forecasting, and budgeting when you're doing a solar with battery storage project compared with a solar only project. Uh, and a lot of the risk has to do with the fact that you are now going to do major modification on the internal electrical system of the home. So there's more risk. It's not just the risk of knowing how to use the equipment, but it's the risk of how do you manage the internals of that home's electrical system. And homes can be very, very different, especially larger homes. Uh, a lot of the early adopters of solar and storage technology were more affluent buyers that had larger homes with, with larger than traditional electrical or larger than the average electrical service. And so navigating that complexity falls on your contractor. Now, we've already talked about the longer pay cycle from the finance companies. So contractors now are having to deal with the fact that they may not get paid in a project until four to six months after the, the initial contract is signed, which means the contractors are, are likely going to have additional finance cost on their side if they have to borrow money from the bank, especially with interest rates being higher now. So if they have to borrow money from the bank to, to cash flow through the project and then wait to get paid at the end, that's gonna be passed through to the end user in the form of a higher install cost. And then there's the question of, will the dealer fees ever come down? Now, when we talk about dealer fees, or sometimes we, we call them closing costs, but basically they're fees that the contractor has to pay to the finance company to be able to originate a new solar loan. And these fees have exploded in the past year, year and a half where they used to be. I can remember when I first started in solar financing, dealer fees were as low as 7%. Now we're seeing dealer fees or closing costs as high as 35 to 40% of the total project amount. That means in some cases, 40% of your total solar cost is just paid straight to the bank as a fee before the contractor sees the first cent of it. And so that means that again, you're gonna be charged a much higher retail price as a consumer. Now, we hope that we will see dealer fees come down as interest rates are expected to come down, but with unknown how many more solar company bankruptcies are in the pipeline still working through the system, the finance companies may need to keep dealer fees high to offset those losses in other areas. Now, recently I've been spending some time traveling around the country meeting with solar companies to try to figure out 
what the best companies, what the most successful companies have been doing that the companies that are struggling are not. And of course, I want to share that information with you uh, as part of the audience here so that you all can uh, take these lessons and apply them in your business so you can stay as competitive as possible. So here's some things I noticed about the companies that are having success in today's environment. Many of them are smaller companies with a regional focus. Maybe they just focus on one or two states, or if in the case of California, they just focus on a particular region of California where they can stay within about a one or two hour drive from their office or their local office to the project site. So they're not trying to scale too fast. They're not trying to be everything to everybody. They have a smaller regional focus. The other thing I noticed is that they make very limited use of outside sales dealers. You know, a popular model here in the solar industry is you have one company that does the contracting, the construction, that's what we call the EPC or the contractor, and you have a separate company that does the marketing and sales. So we would call them the sales dealer or the dealer. So what a lot of companies did, especially those that were chasing aggressive growth, was they would onboard as many independent sales and marketing dealers as possible to pump as many new projects into the pipeline. Now, the challenge with that is that keeping those projects within, within a healthy specification can become a challenge when you have people that are selling all different sorts of systems with different sales and marketing and customer acquisition methods. So the companies that I'm seeing that are having success in today's environment uh, make limited use, I would say no more than 50% of their sales coming from third party sales dealers. But the other thing I'm noticing is that these contractors are offering a diversity of services. Uh, it's no longer just solar panels. Now we're talking about solar panels. Uh, of course, we're talking battery storage, especially in California, battery attachment rates are going up. Uh, but they're also offering a number of other complementing services. In some cases, roofing and roof repair, uh, water heater upgrade replacement, heat pump upgrade replacement, uh, and of course, electric vehicle charger installation as well. So this has been a brief, brief discussion of what's going on in the solar market and why solar panel prices have fallen 50% compared to where we were this time last year. Uh, by the way, folks, if you're getting good value from the videos you watch on Solar Surge, make sure you give us a thumbs up. Uh, and go ahead and subscribe to the channel as well if you haven't done so already. That way, as we have new announcements and videos like this coming out, it'll come up on your feed so you can stay up to date with us. Now, of course, if you're a homeowner out there, if you're in the process of looking at different solar power or battery storage options for your home, uh, if you need to get a price quote, or maybe you already have a price quote, you just need to get a comparison to make sure that you're getting the best equipment or getting the best deal. Uh, as always, feel free to reach out to us on the link below there. You can set up a call with a solar expert or just use our free online quote tool so you can see how much solar and storage costs in your area. Well, that does it for today's video. I thank you for spending some more time on Solar Surge. And as always, I'm Joe Ordia, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon.